That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> you started it with this. <laughs> you started it, I'm like, all right. It's a good song. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Come on, <laughs> Like, well, <laughs> we didn't even start going downhill. <laughs> For those of you who don't understand, oh, first off, welcome to Whiskey Lead Steel Feeling Shirt While You Ate the official podcast of Aggressive Defensive Solutions. We've just been uh, <laughs> laughing about uh, one of the many probably inappropriate, according to corporate America rule sets, um, uh, organizational communications uh, series that happened uh, over the holidays. Merry Christmas to all of us. And most of us were left uh, nonplussed by Lee Curling's completely out of character response to something that was... Fairly innocuous. Uh, Lee apparently decided uh, go big early, uh, came off the top turnbuckle with something that nobody was expecting, and uh, left Mac, of all people, uh, unable to respond. I just shook my head because for decades now, I've been telling people, no, 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 Lee Curling's a sleeper cell. Oh, no. Lee's a great guy. Uh, They're going to elect him to be the Pope, and he's not even a Catholic. He's just a good dude. (laughs) Wrong. Anyway, um, so all of that frivolity aside, uh, while we're out walking around in the woods uh, planning our machinations to overtake the world once Putin and the rest of the commies all fold up their tents and go the fuck back where they belong, um, Jeremy said, we should do a podcast about why you hate canics and Tauruses and Tang Folios and the like. And bursas. And bursas. Bursas. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know that that's exactly what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about stuff. For those of you who don't recognize him, this is Lee Curling, future governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and of course, Jeremy, uh, Garth to our uh, our Wayne, if you will. Um, I was going to say, you expect bullshit from me in the organizational exactly. communications. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah no, nobody's surprised when Jeremy throws some shit out there and like, oh, yeah, that's Jeremy. And then we're like, Lee said what? I didn't know Lee knew how that word was spelled. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we'll jump right in this one. We'll, we'll, we'll go to Lee first. So Lee, in the in the vein of uh, why you hate these various guns, um, <laughs> what is your preferred everyday carry weapon and why that gun? Go. (laughs) And go. 365 XL. Why? Because... The Germans. Because... Because because it was a present. (laughs) No. um, 365 XL. Um, So... um, It's got a rear sight on it. Move to it. It does. (laughs) Mine does not. (laughs) So it's why? Your optic is this big. So so why? Um, you know, nine millimeter, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you mm-hmm. know, so a, a full size round mm-hmm. um, in a compact weapon, mm-hmm. right? That, that size wise, the grip, the trigger, and the action on this are are all relatively smooth. So. Prior to this, I carried a MP shield, mm-hmm. and it was a bit snappy. Um, why? Why not something smaller? Like uh, I don't know, a Bursa 380. <laughs> Thunder. Um, right? Why not a 380? I mean, it's just the snappiness of those 380s. And people go, why? And and it's the the nine millimeters that there's that slight lock, right? That does not exist on almost all of the 380s, yeah. right? So there's a different spring action on 380s. Right? There's there's they don't lock, and you end up with a much much snappier, more painful recoil on a smaller, generally less effective round. I'm going to say generally less effective because somebody say your out, favorite because somebody <laughs> out there is going to go oh they they have you know. Plus P plus 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 P plus super three eighties probably whatever. <laughs> oh, and, um, and just so we know, yeah. if you have a plus P plus three eighty, um, it's nine millimeter. 
I'm Elmer Parabellum. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know. I got a turtle um, on my four solar Mustang. Yeah. So, so well, yeah, I, I will say generally my hate on the, on those 380s is, is that it's, there's, there's almost no advantage anymore in a 380, right? The, the compact and the, the subcompact nine millimeters now. Well, why not a superior action? firearm like a Kimber Super Carrier or something so, like that? And then, and then why, why do I do a compact and not, you know, um, a X5, you know, Legion, you know, which is a great shooting gun? Um, because I'm not fat enough to, to conceal a, a, a Legion, right? No, anyway, in all seriousness, I'm, I'm not big enough. I'm, I'm feeling a little fucking stung because, in fact, I carry a full size. I used to carry no, a full size so fucking Glock 17 around. Um, I'm not a fat fuck, so I don't carry a full size gun. Hang on, here's my 34. Yeah, yeah. And so, five spare magazines. So, um, yeah. He's well, like, I got shit to do. I got to run. I got to catch Goggins. The, the, uh, yeah, the Legion. But, but a full size, you know, so, you know, do have the, the, the 320 um, Nitron, which is which is pretty much a full, you know, it's it's it's, it's a full size frame, full size gun. Um, yeah, it's summer carry. It's 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 tough for me, but um, you know, it's a winner that that works. Um, but, but but no Taurus, no Kimber, no not a Taurus. So I I will say this. So I carried when I when I was in the army. Um, I was in uh, I was I was in a yeah I was in a position um, to carry an M9 concealed, and there was no real concealment of it. There was right, <laughs> right. It just it back just, when you were 117 pounds. <laughs> no, so it was, what's what's really funny? What's 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 really funny when it comes to that? Uh, I was I was at a I, I was I was at an event. Um, if I said the event, it would it would take the the humor out of the story here. But uh, one of the guys that, that I was in the army with um, was carrying his brand new, you know, Sig gun duty weapon that is M11, a a, a, a a even larger than the M9, you know, in his suit, and it was like, yeah, there's there's absolutely no. There is no concealment of this, right? It's just, it's just, it's just a massive nut. So, but, but the point, right? You know, the, the, the point is, what do I care concealed? You know, something a little bit smaller. I'm, I'm, you know, not full size. I'm the Beretta M9. I'm not going to hate on. I generally never had any real problems with it in the, in the military. The Taurus is just a knockoff. So, but I, I don't know. You hate on the, the Taurus a little bit. What's, what's the hate on that? So, I hate on the Tauruses for the same reason I hate on the Rugers. Um, so the guns that they make, not the guns that they knock off, like the, the Taurus copy of a Beretta, the Taurus copy of a mm -hmm. Sig, um, the Taurus copy of all of the Smith & Wesson wheel guns, they're actually really good guns. They're heavy because mm -hmm. they're made out of fucking steel. Um, but they're, they're generally pretty good guns. It's the guns that they invented, um, which not unlike like some of these Canics and tank folios and shit where I go, looking at the ergonomics of this, did you intend this gun to be shot by human beings? You know, it's, it's like a Ruger. Any of the Ruger semi-automatic 9mm and 45s, they are, they're counterintuitive. So, and they're big and they're clunky, and they're clunkier than Glocks. They're big and they're clunky and they get weird ergonomics on them and shit. And they're just a little, I don't, I, they're just, they're not efficient. That, that becomes my thing. Um, and then they're, they made out of very heavy steel and back and forth. And I'm, I don't complain too much about heavy guns. I carried a 5906 by choice for decades. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I carried a 5906 when the rest of the department was carrying Glocks. So I was like, no, mm -hmm. nope, 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 nope. I'll keep my Smith. Um, That's why he still walks with a limp, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you make jokes about that. But that's... That, yeah, actually, I have to see a chiropractor because I carry fucking guns like that. But anyway, um, so my, my thing on them typically has to do with the ergonomics and how they, how many of these guns just seem to be counterintuitive um, because they're 
not designed by, for lack of a better phrase, a gun culture. You know, the prime example of that is the Glock. The Glock series is a great, great system for what it is. But none of the people involved in the development of that gun were gun people, which is why it doesn't feel like any other gun on the planet. Um, and but they, Adrian hates on them. Yeah, but but they <laughs> were day. but they were Austrians, so they're almost German, and so they brought in engineers and doctors, and that's why they got what they got. Mm -hmm. I I don't know that doctors or engineers are involved in the develop of like canics and tankful. I think mostly like goat herders um, and dudes who are amazed by blacksmiths are the guys who are involved in that. Like we had a it was a canic of some sort that came in the other day to the shop, and this was a design feature. It had clear panels in the magazine and clear panels in the grip of a 1911 style gun so that while you were shooting it, you could, you could look and see how many more rounds you had left. Novel which feature. almost sounds like a great <laughs> idea. Almost. Um, yeah, so that's... So, so no Bond arms for you? No North American arms for you? <laughs> The high point. The high point. That high point thing that looks like it was a a, a, a prop from Planet of the Apes. Well, we, you know, I, I've got a 1911, uh, an AMT. Uh, <laughs> it's a hardballer. All stainless steel hard, hard 1911. And, and you know what? So, so it is a hardballer. You know, it doesn't feel, it, it will not feed a hollow point. Which makes me go, you know, and it took me a while, and then one day it was just like, may, may, maybe that's maybe that's <laughs> why, maybe that's why they named it a hardballer because it won't <laughs> feed anything other than ball ammunition. Yeah, you try to feed a a, a hollow point in there, and it will even a silver tip, which is oh, yeah. all, which is almost <laughs> a hard almost, point. Almost, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it has sil silver tips, it would catch on the feed ramp. Yeah. Yep. I mean, what? Well, yeah. So a stainless, an all stainless steel 1911. You're like, mm -hmm. how could I make this heavier? <laughs> now I am gonna say, which I don't, I don't think the company is is in existence anymore. But I got it, and it had no rear sight on it. Yeah. Right. I <laughs> sent them a letter because that's how long ago it was. <laughs> I kid you not. I sent them a telegram on the Pony Express. I I sent I sent them a letter because 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 that's the way you did things back in the uh, yeah. in, in those days. Uh, back when stamps and, were three cents. Yeah, <laughs> sent a telegram. Sent a telegram, and you know, yeah, to 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 get a new um, to get a new rear sight for it, and they sent me for free. A new site, mm -hmm. uh, and they sent me a diagram of the exploded view of the gun with all the part numbers and, and everything else on it, and their price price list. So if, there, if you need anything else, <laughs> if we forgot any other parts of this yeah. gun, <laughs> but, but, but the fact is, but the fact is, you know, they were like, oh, the site fell off. Okay, here's a, you know, and it's just, it's just a flat. It's just a flat insert for the, the adjustable yeah. sight in the rear, but it was like, yeah. it's like alrighty. Yeah, so, I I definitely gave them props for. Oh yeah, that, right. And it, mm -hmm. and it, as long as you're shooting ball in it, it's a good shooting gun. Oh, it, it is. <laughs> and there's it almost is. no felt recoil impulse. On oh no, no, thing. oh no. Yep. Yeah. So, well, Jeremy, what do you carry, and why? Uh, kind of a mixed bag there. Mm -hmm. Um. Not gonna lie, a lot of times it's a uh, Smith and Wesson J frame during the summer. Not wrong with that. Although I am trying to uh, upgrade to uh, a 365 XL that is currently missing a rear sight or sight apparatus of some sort, but you know, that was uh, I'm trying to find a red dot that fits it better. But Mike has them. You know, I'm, I'm, buy one from him. Yeah, but he's out, you know, shooting four legged bambies that, and that, shit like that, that right now. Yeah, so. Yes. But, uh, you know, so that, you know, the 365 will probably become my go-to for the mm -hmm. most part. Um, you know, up until that, it was a Glock 42 in your favorite 380 caliber. Um, because, you know, when the rest of the world was developing 9mm single stacks, Glock was like, hey, we're going we're gonna to get ahead of this. Single stack 380. Yeah, because that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Glock, 
block ingenuity in the last you know freaking two decades, but uh, <laughs> about three three years after yeah, everybody else. Single, oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take our nine millimeter <laughs> super compact and chamber it in three eighty. What? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, since I am a more portly gentleman here at the table, <laughs> you know, so it would uh. <laughs> the, the 320 carry and the four magazines that I carry on myself, you know, because I am a more stout gentleman. <laughs> I got the real estate to carry all this shit. You know, after my Scar 17, you know, stops working. <laughs> Does anybody actually own a Scar? <laughs> my, my my brother, a LAR Marine, does. Ah, that explains. And he's got a commission, right? Yeah. No, oh, there you go. Also owns a ex, you know, military Humvee, but that's <laughs> just just fits in with that culture. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, Kimbers, you know, they're they're pretty, but I haven't seen them work too well. Uh, and everything else, just uh, don't, don't, don't seem to have that reliability of the SIGs that I've been converting over to and the Glocks mm -hmm. that I have been a long-standing fan of. Yeah. So when people ask me about Glocks, I go, uh, I can't, I can't talk shit on Glock about their reliability or their functionability. They're not horribly accurate, but you understand that going into it because they don't mm -hmm. have a steel insert in the frame. Um, so they torque every time they go off. My only, my complaints about Glocks have always been, um, they're clunky. You know, the, the ergonomics on them kind of suck, right? If you shoot anything else, mm -hmm. if you only carry one gun, then a Glock's fine. But if you carry, if you shoot a variety of guns, Glocks become one of those things where you pick it up and you go, what the fuck? And you got to adjust to it. Um, and uh, the striker fired system that they used up until Gen 5 um, was a, really was a double action because mm -hmm. when you press the trigger, you drove the striker back and then you released the striker. So you were still yeah. doing two actions. Um, Smith and Sig developed their striker fired systems. So they're actually single action, which is one of the reasons that they're as nice as they are. Mm -hmm. um, which, with the Glock, we used to call it, you know, an action and a half. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's action and a half, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, there were, yeah. and because of the way it was designed, and again, form following function, the Glock was never designed to be a slick running competitive yeah. style gun it was designed it, it's the ak-47 of pistols yeah. here hand this to somebody who can't read mm -hmm. and you give them a three minute coaching on how this works and then they can go out and and get they, the job done and they make they, fucking millions of them yeah, right. yeah they, they, they were not they were not looking when they designed the original clock to to capture the civilian sporting shooting market because they're, they're from Austria and there isn't one no they, they were they were they were looking to, to capture a, a military and, and then and then went into law enforcement, law enforcement yeah. yeah right something um, so but but, but but I mean you know Walthers are kind of from the same general region of the world what do you got against Walthers So <laughs> had to shut down restart not, there. Well, <laughs> so I don't I don't have much against Walthers, truth to tell. Um, the only thing I don't like about Walthers, and it's about the only thing that I don't like about BHKs, is the magazine release built into the bottom of the trigger guard. Mm -hmm. That's is that weird European it's, thing. It is weird. Mm -hmm. Right and after they moved it off the heel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean that it's better than having it on on the yeah. the floor plate, but um, I have seen I've got, a, I've got a client who shoots a VP9 and what he has found is that he has to disengage his uh, magazine with the middle finger of his mm -hmm. shooting hand because otherwise, if he's got a proper grip, his finger's in the way of being able to press down the magazine release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from a gunfighter's standpoint, that seems a little odd. And the the HK one is bigger than the Glock, uh, than the mm -hmm. Walther. The Walther yeah. um, other than that, the only, um, the Walthers and the um, Mausers and the Styers, they're all good guns. Oddly enough, they're, they're as expensive as HKs, so that's not a great thing. Um, but the ergonomics on them 
I, I guess the easiest way for me to the, the easiest analogy for that would be um, I like to drive a Jeep. I like the way a Jeep rides, right? Um, and HKs and SIGs are kind of Jeep-ish, mm -hmm. whereas the Walters and the Mausers that I've monkeyed with and the Styers all seem to be more like driving um, a Bugatti. And I, it's just, I, I'm not big on the feel. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not bad guns. Um, but I think part of the problem that we run into them is because they're as expensive as they are, they have a very, very small chunk of the market, mm -hmm. which means getting things for them, getting holsters for them, getting you know magazines and that kind of thing becomes difficult. And because of that, you never see them. You know, they're, they're just not out there. And because they're not out there, you don't have the opportunity to get comfortable with them. Um, I was a fan of the, of the 226 and the 228 families of mm -hmm. SIGs. Yeah. Uh, I've got a 226 uh, back when they were reasonably priced. Um, <laughs> SIG, I, I got to give credit where it's due. SIG, SIG knocked, knocked it out of the ballpark. I was a Smith & Wesson guy. I carried Smith & Wessons um, when I retired from the police department uh, and didn't have to carry a Glock anymore. I quit carrying a Glock. And I carried a Smith & Wesson M&P, full size, because, uh, you know, I'm a stout mm -hmm. fellow like you. I'm not a runner. I, I have some fucking, some did, acreage did, here. Didn't, didn't get up and run 17 yeah. miles on Christmas morning. Yeah. Before his coffee. Whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I carried a full size. 13. Yeah, yeah. So I carried an M&P 9 mil full size or an M&P 45 full size. And then um, working in the gun shop. And then working around, I you know, had a bunch of clients who came out with 320s. Mm -hmm. And I shot the 320. I was like, man, if I could justify buying another gun, I'd get a 320. <laughs> and then lo and behold, I ended up with a 365 XL, which is my summertime gun, and a 320 Nitron, um, like you guys have got. Um, I still carry from time to time uh, a full size MP if I think I'm going to go someplace where I need the extra ammo and the extra distance of, of barrel. But, you know, I'm. I'm I'm not an operational shooter anymore. I don't arrest people. I don't go into buildings. So it's all about uh, carrying enough gun to get me off the X and move away quickly. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not exclusively carrying SIGs, but I carry SIGs a good bit now. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not a striker-fired guy, mm -hmm. but the striker system that, that SIG and Smith use, big fan of that. And, and the ergonomics on them are good. Yeah. So if Glock's a Jeep, is a Tangfolio a Fiero? A Tangfolio. So a Glock is not a Jeep. Okay. A, 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 a Glock is an Uaz. Okay. <laughs> and a Tangfolio is a... Um, a Tangfolio is if you go... Like, if you tried to make a Suzuki Samurai out of a Yugo, <laughs> or a Fiat, because they're Italian, so it's a Fiat version of a of a Yugo version of an Uaz. That's fair. Yeah. An M&P is a Jeep. A actually, an M&P is a Jeep Unlimited. It's really not as Jeepy as, like, a 1990 Wrangler. A 5906 is a 1990 Wrangler. Yeah. Whereas a 1911 is a is a Willys Jeep. It's a Willys. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Because because you can break it, and it's hard to yeah. break. Yeah. But you know, and, and you and but, you can but, not take but, care of it, and it'll it'll and still it'll, it'll still go and, down and, the road, and it'll right, and but you can break it, but. It's it. There's not enough parts on it for it to be broken permanently, so yeah. you can fix it. Yeah. Then the bushings can be loose, and the spring cannot have enough spring in it, and it's still going to run, uh -huh. just like a Willys. Yep. Yeah. Just, just turn a little bit, turn a little tighter. That's it. You know, we, we were out in the field, and the the old uh, in one five one, it was they'd clog up and pull the fuel filter off and shove a screwdriver through the fuel filter. So the rust can go right straight in the engine because you know it was it was clogged up. Cause, yeah. Hey, you know you had to do what you had to do, but you don't run it. You keep running it. You know, yeah. Keep running. Yeah. No, uh, no Springfields for you. 
Like a real Springfield or like a Croatian Springfield? <laughs> well, it's either the Operator oh. series or the, uh, you know, like you said, the Croatian. <laughs> I haven't really, really done Springfield. I haven't really done Springfield. I don't like it's, the XD. No, I haven't, I haven't done that. Well, and, and, and truth to tell, my, my first thing that I dislike about all of those mm -hmm. is I don't like anything with a grip safety. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Don't like any of that. Don't like the, I don't like that about the shield. Mm -hmm. Um not a fan about about the 1911. Mm -hmm. I think I think John Browning was right when he said all of the bad things about the 1911 I fixed with the high power. Got mm -hmm. rid of the grip safety. Um, you need a bigger tang though, and mm -hmm. then you need to drop free mags. But mm -hmm. again, the Belgians and all those people. It, 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 it's, it's a different. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a different, different theory of operation, yeah. right? It's the whole point. It's the whole point with the, with the original Glocks, right? It was yep. it was all about theory of operation. Yep. Yeah, you don't you don't drop mags. You... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I was talking to Mac the other day, and we, we were talking about different weapons platforms. And he said, "Well, you know, uh, what I like about the because he is all over his Galil, right? Whatever." So he's like, "Oh, the AK." Then I'm like, "Well, okay, the ergonomics on an AK suck." Mm -hmm. Sorry for all of the fucking larpers out there. Uh, the ergonomics on the AK suck because you have to let go with your support, your shooting mm -hmm. hand to fuck around with the gun. So. And it takes two hands to unload it and all that. And everybody goes, well, but, but you could bury them in the mud and then they run and blah, 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 blah. Okay, dude, I, I was downrange. I, I carried a gun for a living on the street as a cop for three decades. And I was in the Marine Corps and I carried a long gun for what some of the shit that I did in the Ghost Guard. You carried guns downrange and overseas and did all as did you um did you have a lot of problems with clogging your m4 with fucking mud on a day-to-day -day basis no what about you salt salt water doesn't you know clog things up and yeah. sand uh, so the whole take care of it. This is a whole well we could issue these to the vc and it'd be okay yeah, yeah. fuck the, all that the saw yes well yeah 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 right right but 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 the, but the M4 platform, so mm -hmm. so I said, well, yeah, that's all well and good, Mac. I said, but quite honestly, if you take moderate care mm -hmm. of your M4 platform, not one of these checked out race guns that somebody's hey. built that, you know, the, the STI version of, a, of an AR. But if you have a legitimate AR-15 M4 platform, the ergonomics are better. It is more inherently accurate and they run. My training gun, when I was working at fucking Blackwater, uh, the gun I left in the back of my Jeep all the time, I cleaned it when it quit running, yeah. mm -hmm. which was somewhere around 7,000 rounds. Yeah, of I was going to say, I was bullshit training five ammo. and change, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. the whole idea of, well, you've got to carry the AK platform is superior because you can shoot it dirty and scuzzy. Well, I got news for you, dude. When I carry anything that I'm going to bet my fucking life on, I have a tendency to take good care of. Yeah. <clears throat> the having to reach over or under yeah, or manipulate. Or, or, mm -hmm. You know, that that's a that was a, a, a design that, that was again, a design it was mistake. Designed that way, yeah. yeah, yeah, but but it was a design mistake for the way it is used. It's fucking Russian, right? Respect. But yeah. yeah. But to that end, but to that end, you know, the the charging handle at the rear on the AR platform, you know, you're you're, you're still in the same boat, right? You, you you are still having to break that. True. So you know, there's there's a flaw there, but it's, but again, I, I that whole man, trying to manipulate that. I, I'm just the, well, and, and of course, the AK family is not mm -hmm. accurate. Now the Valmets and the Galils are better than anything built by the Soviet bloc, obviously. Um, and the Chikom guns are actually better than the Russian shit because, you know, the Russian... Because the, the Soviet thing is, you know, quantity is a quality all of its own. Oh. Um, but, the, you know, you're talking about... One of the things that was always telling to me about the design of the AK platform was... So the safety is on the right-hand side of the gun, so you have to let go of it because most of the world is right-handed. Except for people who get up and run 16 miles on Christmas morning. Um, it was so, only 13. Whatever. <laughs> so, so you go from safe to fully automatic, then down to semi-automatic. That just, that alone tells me about the doctrine of your organization. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gross right. motor skills. Yeah. So no, nobody, nobody in this group knows how to read. So here's your AK-47 and go off and kill the Capitals. Um, I've seen somebody bring a Norinko out to a match. Um, no, I've seen a couple. We, we, we've seen a couple of uh, guy, pawn shop freaking well, handguns show up. At well, the we match, had a guy. Right? Well, no, we, had, um, we had a guy came out to one of the two guns who had an SKS magazine conversion. And, you know, mm-hmm. but back to the, you know, handguns. Which is actually, we, I think, a better thing than the AK. So, but, uh, you know, back to handguns that we prefer or talk shit on. I haven't seen somebody show up with a Norinko. Who was the dude? Oh, man, I forget him. He came out and, I forget his name, he shot with us at C2 a good bit. He had like a, a llama or some shit. Yeah. And he had like duct tape around the grips. I was like, this dude, this guy, this guy draws as much attention as Adrian showing up in his suit. He's a good yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had all kinds of crazy but shit going yeah, on. Yeah, that you know, pawn shop, some two hundred dollar mm-hmm. fine. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. we need to do that. We need to do a shitty gun competition. Oh, we'll get Mike Sh- Brady in on this. This will be fun. Shitty gun competition. Yeah, <laughs> bring. <laughs> High points, Norinkos, and Bursas for all my friends. Dude, dude, we do that. Somewhere I have an owl head, break top, 32 Smith & Wesson. Oh, there we go. Old Schofield or something. Yeah. <laughs> ah, awesome. I'll have to... You bring your Colt 1903. Yeah. Little pocket pistol. Made to go in oh, a... The, the 22 pepper... There you a go. Pepper box. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> four, yeah. four barrel pepper box. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, we talked about the fact that uh, Sig Sauer met in Germany, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sig Germans, right? So, so we all agree that Sig Sauer makes a great gun. We all agree that Glocks are like making out with your cousin. I mean, they can get the job done, but you really don't want people knowing about it. <laughs> And tank folios are good for lot lizards. Yes, yes. If, if you if you're being attacked by a lot lizard at the truck stop, get your 10 millimeter tank folio, because I don't know that I would be. I don't know that I got the stones to believe that a tank folio is going to handle 10 millimeter for very long. I think I, I I don't I don't trust that you could get through a full magazine without the gun coming apart. And here's the problem too. So it's Italian, which means that. It comes apart into like seventeen hundred pieces. Yeah, because here's I was telling just telling Mike Breen about this the other day. We we're working on something, and I said it seems to me because like Beretta makes a great gun, but it seems to me like like a guy went to work in a German gun shop and he learned how to make guns, and then he came back to Italy and he said I want to make a gun, and he made a gun and he went no 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 no. We need to double the amount of parts. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. no particular reason. Yeah. 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 Go on. We, we need to break the barrel into three parts. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's a barrel. It should be together. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's make it in three parts. Yeah. And, and we'll and, screw it together. Yeah. And we'll screw it together. Put a couple pins in there. Yeah. And then a spring, a very small spring, <laughs> very small, string shaped spring. Yeah. I'm like, what? You with, 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 with a detent that drill it out with a ball and a spring to one, with the detent. One one hundred long twenty eighths of an inch. <laughs> yeah. Punched. Yeah. Yeah. We need we need a gun that has an O ring in it. Why? Well because <laughs> what? Yeah. Because nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 As 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 opposed to the old HK. Did you ever shoot one of the HK squeeze cockers? Uh, yeah. The uh, P seven or yeah, the whatever. P7. So when I went when I went to Fletzy for mm. uh, one of the schools, I went down there. Um, they had one, and it was typical. There was a right, when, you, when you grip the gun and you squeeze it, then it cocks the weapon, and then it's good. And then when you let go of it, it does not cock, so the weapon is safe. And yada yada. yada. Oh, okay, whatever, there, Hans. Right. <laughs> but so here's the thing: it's a gas operated pistol, right? Ugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not piston, not a piston. 
gas, direct impingement gas operated fucking pistol, pistol. right? <laughs> Which only the Germans could make and it works. Here's the catch though. The gas system runs right under the dust cover and right across the top of the fucking trigger system. So by the time you rapid fire the first mag, you want to let go of the gun because it's fucking hot. <laughs> I'm like, did you guys think this through? Well, you shouldn't fire that many rounds. Exactly. Right. Why would you shoot more than a magazine worth of rounds at a time? How many lot lizards do you got to deal with? Yeah. With 10 millimeter. Good <laughs> Lord. Again, yeah. it's, 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 it's different concept. It is a yes. different concept of operation. Yeah, because because the Europeans yeah. are not handgun fighters. No. 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 Okay. It's it's we we've made this for a police agency. Well, and or, 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 well, and then yeah. the Europe the European police, right. they're not handgun fighters either. No, because they oh, all no, carry no. long guns. Exactly. Their their handguns this legitimately are yeah submachine gun. Yeah, yeah. They will. Well, <laughs> if 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 I run out of ammo, I've never, been in, I've never been in an airport that I wasn't surrounded by guys with submachine guns. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh -huh. yeah. 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 um, because only plainclothes people in Europe carry handguns mm -hmm. as primaries, you know, as opposed to here in America where mm -hmm. and everybody's got a handgun mm -hmm. and, and unless they're lucky enough to have a long gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which there's a subject for another fucking podcast. Home defense system. What's better? Remington 870 or an M4? Ponder that one. I mean, I know the answer. Double barrel shotgun. I go out there and I go out there I tell her, Jill, it's, it's, it's Pirates of the Caribbean! <laughs> that right. doddering old fucking doofus. <laughs> Speaking of that, we went and saw um, Aquaman yesterday. You don't even get the reference there. No. After you were done running your, you know, second marathon of the day or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand the yeah, reference to Aquaman. A, 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 Amber Heard was... Was in uh, oh, Amber Heard was in there. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah. I was wondering why you spent money on that, and, but you know I so, couldn't get past the running part. Right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hang on. So, yeah. so, so I, I've, I've got to check and make sure. So, is the reference to Biden and Aquaman? Is that the lengthy reference that Amber Heard was in Aquaman, and she and Joe Biden both shit the bed fairly often? No, it, Johnny Depp was in the middle. It was in the middle of. The oh, oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure he falls asleep at the podium and shits himself. And then uh, Kareem Grey Poubon, whatever her name, oh. goes up there and answers a question that nobody asked. Which is why this election season, vote for Lee Curling. Lee Curling. As, as a matter of fact, if given the choice, because, well, right off the get-go, if you're in Colorado, you can't vote for Trump because those commies won't let you. So you should write in Lee Curling for president. I have done absolutely nothing that would prevent me from being on a ballot in any of the 50 states. Does Colorado sell that? Another uh, reason. Does Colorado sell those like one square foot certificates so that we can make sure Lee meets the residency requirements? That, that, that's a thing to think about. I don't want him to be the governor of Colorado. Fucking Colorado's cold. I don't want to live in Colorado. Which is why we're buying one square foot. So buy memberships. That way we can afford one square foot of Colorado to get Lee Curling to be governor. I don't want him to be the governor of Colorado. I want him to be the governor of Virginia. Can you be governor of multiple states? Is there anything against that? I don't know. Well, federally, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be... Oh, you know what? <laughs> I... That would be kind of cool. <laughs> here's, here's here's what I want to do. How much power do you have if you're like if you're like governor of like four or five states? Are, are, just, are, wait, you, wait, hang on. Are they are they contiguous states? <laughs> Oregon, <laughs> Alabama, here's, New here, Hampshire. Here, here, here's what we do. We get we get Lee Curling to be the governor of West Virginia, and then he's and then he petitions. To bring West Virginia back into Virginia. And then when that happens, we get Lee to become the governor of Kentucky. And then he gets Kentucky to come back into Start Virginia. <laughs> and then he becomes the governor of all of that. I like it. Yeah. We got some research to do. I hate politics and politicians, 
But what I would like to do, here's what I think would be cool. I want to be a member of the Virginia Senate and the senator from Virginia to the U.S. Senate at the same time. I don't think there's a rule that says you can't do that. I guess we'll find out soon. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to do You just have to look to see, are, are they in session at the same time? That becomes the only, the only, the only issue there. See, the man who would but know, which is why he's because, going to be but, running. Because when, you're in, when they're in session, you are, you are required to be in certain places while they're in session. In Virginia, yes. I'll go out on a limb and say that there's plenty of fucking senators who are not in the Senate during session. Because they're busy off fucking, they're all snorting blow it's, off the fucking butt crack of some hooker. Mac? <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for watching. Their son is. I'm not really <laughs> sure how much longer this was going to go down the road here, but thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week, and don't forget to vote whenever voting happens. <laughs> 2024 is going to be a good year. Don't buy canics. Yeah, if we're if we're starting it this way, it's going to be a good year. <laughs> be good. Be safe. Out.